Okay, so like, is it just me or does fall just make everyone want to like reinvent themselves? It's like a universal thing, right? September hits and it's all pumpkin spice and uh, new year, new me, but like the autumn version. Totally. And this whole that girl thing, like it's peak fall vibes, you know? Yeah. So we thought for this deep dive, let's like scroll through social media together and break it all down. Sounds fun. So imagine this, you're scrolling and this video pops up title card, becoming that girl this fall. And it's all glowy, you know, with like chill music and everything. Oh, I know exactly the vibe. Okay, I'm intrigued. What's the what's the secret sauce? Well, the influencer, she really hones in on this idea of like self-acceptance being the, the core, the foundation. And she actually gives you some pretty specific steps to get started. Okay, lay it on me. So step one is starting your day with all those like, I am powerful, I am capable affirmations. You know, the ones you see all over Pinterest. Sure. Yeah. And get this. She's also really big on keeping a confidence journal. Interesting. Yeah, I thought so too. Because it's not just some like fluffy self-help trend. Yeah, there's actually some, there's some real science behind this stuff, like positive self-talk. It can actually, it can rewire your brain, like literally build new neural pathways towards a more, you know, empowered you. Wait, really? So it's not just me trying to like convince myself that I'm a morning person. No, no, it's it's about consistency. The more you focus on those positive affirmations, the more your brain actually starts to like believe them. And that can lead to, you know, some pretty some pretty tangible changes in your in your self-perception and your behavior. Wow. Okay, so I need to get on that. And the the journal thing, I kind of see that as like taking those positive vibes and you know like putting them in a time capsule or something yeah yeah exactly it's a record of your progress yeah you know imagine looking back and seeing like how far you've come plus writing itself like the act of writing can be really therapeutic it helps you you know process your emotions identify patterns you know all that good stuff yeah that makes sense but here's here's where i get a little i don't know maybe a little wary is this confidence journal really about like celebrating your own journey yeah or is there a risk of it just becoming another like measuring stick you know another way to compare yourself to that that perfect curated that girl ideal that's that's the million dollar question isn't it and it's definitely yep. something to be you know to be mindful of because the techniques themselves like the affirmations the journaling they're they are grounded in, in, in psychology, but the intention behind them, that's, that's key, right? Are we doing this for us? for like genuine self-growth or are we like you said chasing an image right because that girl definitely has a look right sure. and our influencer friend in the video she is like all about it healthy eating finding exercise you actually enjoy curating that effortlessly chic wardrobe it's the whole it's the whole package yeah and 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 there's a logic there right because when you feel good physically it, it can kind of, it can translate to just like greater confidence in, in all areas of your yeah. life, right? Like feeling comfortable in your own skin, it's, it's incredibly empowering. Absolutely. But then we're, we're back to that, that balancing act again, right? How do you, how do we embrace self-improvement without getting like swept up in the pressure to conform to this like very specific aesthetic, which let's be real, it, it often feels pretty unattainable, like for the average person who's just trying to like make it to Friday. You've, you've hit on like such a, such a crucial point yeah because it really is about finding that sweet spot between like so striving for your best self but also embracing your individuality like yeah. how do we how do we reconcile this this pursuit of of self-improvement with with the reality that you know we're all unique right we all yeah. have different different bodies different budgets different lifestyles it's a tough one yeah especially in the age of like filters and and everything being like perfect online and it's not just about the the outward stuff either this video also like it dives into the importance of social connections which is huge like yeah. strong social connections they're they are fundamental to to our like mental and emotional health yeah she talks a lot about quality over quantity being mm -hmm. present with with your people and maybe even like stepping outside your comfort zone a little bit to to meet new people through you know shared interests and and that's key right it's not just about like adding names yeah. to your to your contact list it's about you know seeking out those connections that are that are genuinely enriching your life like the relationships that leave you feeling you know energized and supported not not drained or inadequate yes a hundred percent and then she takes it even a step further talking about like 
expanding your horizons beyond just your social circle, you know, like things like continuous learning and and travel. Lifelong learning. It's so important. Mm. Exploring new places, trying new things. You know, it it keeps us engaged. It it challenges our perspectives. It opens us up to to new possibilities like it's 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 essential for personal growth. It sounds amazing, right? But and maybe this is just me, but I always have this little voice in my head that's like, okay, but are you doing this for the experience or are you doing it for the gram? Like, yeah. is this is this self-improvement or is this like resume building for my for my imaginary that girl application? Like that's the line, right? Like, are we doing things for, for us or for the, the gram? It's so true. And you know what else screams that girl? Routines. Oh yeah, the the perfectly curated morning routine. Mm -hmm. Gotta have that matcha latte in the gratitude journal, right? Don't forget the aesthetically pleasing yoga mat. But okay, I have to admit, yeah. as much as I like poke fun, yep. there's a part of me that like really gets it. Oh, for sure. There's a, there's a reason why routines are like so appealing to people, you know? That predictability, it, it can be really comforting, especially in like today's world where everything feels so like chaotic and uncertain. Yes. Like having that sense of, okay, I got this, I'm in control. It's It's almost like a superpower sometimes and she gets into like the nitty-gritty too planning outfits the night before so you don't have that like morning meltdown in front of your closet genius oh 100 percent. eliminate those like yeah. little stressors wherever you can yeah but i guess it does make you wonder you know at what point does a routine go from being about like genuine self-improvement to just like fitting into this mold yeah. right like how many green smoothies do you have to drink before it stops being about like your health and starts being about uh -huh. just just like fitting into this instagram aesthetic exactly and don't get me wrong routines can be like incredibly helpful for you know productivity and well-being yeah but only only if they actually work for you right like if they're aligned with with your actual life and your values so it's less about like copying and pasting someone else's ideal day and more about like designing a framework that actually supports you know your life yes a hundred percent like what works for for one that girl might be totally different for another yeah you know and and that's okay and speaking of taking control this whole like that girl philosophy it it, it extends to finances too oh yeah she goes there budgeting investing side hustle she's like got it all covered it's true and you know it it kind of makes sense right like yeah. it fits with that whole theme of of empowerment that we were talking about earlier like taking charge of your your financial well-being making informed decisions you yeah. know building a future that you actually want it's like incredibly powerful no for sure and i like that she makes this point about like financial literacy being a form of like self-care you know Right, because it, it really does go back to that that sense of control, you know, having that that feeling of like security and, and agency that comes from from understanding your finances. It's like knowledge is power, but like with your bank account. Exactly. And, you know, just like with routines, there's no like one size fits all approach here. Right. What works for one that girl financially might be completely different for another. That's right. Right. It depends on their their circumstances, their goals, you know, how much risk they're comfortable with. OK, so I'm sensing a theme here. Self-awareness is key. Yes, absolutely. Okay. It's about being like discerning, yeah. you know, taking inspiration where you find it, but always, always filtering it through the lens of, of your own values, your own aspirations. And maybe not like buying into the idea that there's only like one way to be, you know. And speaking of which, it's, it's interesting that like, even though this influencer is all about like putting yourself out there, mm -hmm. she also really emphasizes the importance of like digital wellness which is so so important especially like these days right like we are constantly bombarded with with images and information and it's it's so easy to get caught up in in that comparison trap mm. especially when you're you're looking at like curated feeds of of people's highlight reels basically right it's like everyone else has it all figured out but you mm. and it's so hard not to right yep. so you scroll through and it's like everyone's got the dream job the perfect relationship the avocado toast always photographed at the perfect angle it's totally the highlight reel effect you know yeah we're comparing our everyday lives to these like carefully constructed narratives mm -hmm. it's no wonder people end up feeling like inadequate yeah it's like wait my life doesn't look like that what am i doing wrong <laughs> right but the thing is those curated feeds they don't show the whole picture yeah you know 
Totally. And our influencer, she actually touches on that. She's like, be mindful of how much time you're spending online and like pay attention to how those perfectly filtered feeds are making you feel like, are they inspiring you or are they just making you feel bad about yourself? That's like do a little gut check, you know? Right. Like, is this a net positive for my life? Exactly. And if it's not, maybe it's time to, you know, unfollow mute or just like take a step back, you know? Yeah. Like almost like a, a social media detox to your mental health. 100%. Okay, so we've talked about the self-acceptance, the routines, the finances, even like how to handle the whole social media thing. So like what's the what's the big takeaway here? Like what does it really mean to be that girl according to our influencer friend? She ends the video with this really great point. She's basically saying that being an it girl or, you know, any version of like your best self it's, it's not about checking off boxes. You know, it's not about conforming to this like one specific image. It's it's more about how you see yourself and, and how you move through the world. So it's about like owning your own path, even if it doesn't fit neatly into like an Instagram square. Exactly. It's about like yeah. celebrating what makes you you. Like the quirks, the imperfections, all of it. Because true confidence, it comes from within. Right. It doesn't come from from other people's validation or from trying to fit into this like mold that someone else created. Ugh, I love that. It's such a good reminder because honestly, trends, they come and go. But it's that like self-acceptance, that genuine connection, that commitment to learning and growing. Like yeah. those are the things that actually matter. Yes. One hundred percent. It's about the journey, not the destination. Ah. Right. Like embracing the messiness, the imperfections, mm -hmm. because those are like just as much a part of the, that girl's story yeah. as the as the perfectly curated moment. So true. Well, I think that's like the perfect note to end on. As we're like diving headfirst into pumpkin spice latte season, it's a good reminder to like Take inspiration where you find it, but ultimately, you know, define what it girl or any label really means to you. Couldn't have said it better myself.